Well, good morning, adventurers, and welcome to beautiful Alaska. We've made it, y'all. And I hope you guys have your ticket ready because we are officially shoving off right now. All aboard! <laughs> shoving off? Is that what they say? I don't know. What do you say when you board a train? Shoving off is like a boat thing. Yeah. I don't know. Sh we're shipping out. We're pulling out. <laughs> Roll the intro. I don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> this is over. You look cute as hell, though. Do I? Yeah. All right, now we're on the intro. <laughs> So if y'all have been following along with the adventure, you know that we successfully made it with Clementine and Ruby all the way up to Alaska. We are currently in Anchorage and you know that we took the ferry, which was a wild journey, but a, a wild success as well. A wildly successful journey. But then we had to make quite the drive from Haines all the way up here to Anchorage. We've kind of been asking a lot of these little ladies, so we're going to give them a little bit of a break and trade them in for a new set of wheels. That is right, y'all. You can't come to Alaska without doing an epic train ride. Train horn right on cue. <laughs> Things going nuts this morning. It's, it's like nonstop for five minutes. We are about to board this beautiful blue sucker. We are taking the Denali Star from here in Anchorage all the way up, winding through the mountains to Denali, North America's highest peak. And we're doing it in style, y'all. We uh, we got the gold star status. It means <laughs> basically you just get a lot of food and beverages on board, and better viewing. And All aboard! <laughs> time to give you guys a look around this awesome train. So first and foremost, this is kind of the uh, fancy class. We splurged on this one because you get these epic wraparound views and it's not just like a tiny little window you get to peek out of. Look at this thing. The whole car is a freaking window, you guys. And it makes all the difference because you just have like epic views of all the surrounding landscapes. If there's wildlife, you're in like a perfect position to see it. There was a moose mom and baby earlier, but I missed it somehow. Even with these huge windows, I still missed it. <laughs> they were very quick. <laughs> yeah, and very cute apparently. But the section back here is probably the coolest section on the entire train. Follow me. They have this awesome open air balcony section where you really get the best view on the entire train. I think there are actually two of these balconies on the train, but you only get access to it if you've got a gold star. That was really close. That could cut your arm right off, I huh? I know. What if you had been looking at wildlife this way? Guillotine. And I keep hanging my arm out of the out of the train. All right. <laughs> I gotta watch out. Yeah, now we know. Mental note. Uh, look both ways before you stick your head out there. Well, yo, we left Clementine back in Anchorage because we didn't want her to break down on the drive up here, but uh, it turns out our train broke down anyway, so we're just great luck. <laughs> but uh, seriously, we they just came over at the intercom and said there's an issue with their system. Yeah, this, and, she said a bunch of technical stuff I don't really understand. <laughs> but so the engineers are having a meeting and chatting with people back in Anchorage to make sure that we can continue on our journey. I don't know what the alternative is, maybe <laughs> we just live here now. Yeah. I, I could live on the train. I mean, got yeah. plenty of supplies. That's true. They've got booze, and that's kind of all you need. Booze and reindeer sausage. That's <laughs> life. <laughs> on this train and it is actually pretty freaking nice as is most of the rest of the train. And they've got reindeer penne bolognese. That's what we're getting. <laughs> For sure. Well, you, you don't have to get that. That's what I'm but getting. But that's right. It's either that or burger. Why would you get a beef burger when you can get reindeer penne bolognese? Bolognese. <laughs> well, you don't have to be able to pronounce it to eat it. It's possible with reindeer in it. How could it be bad? Did we mention that we get a couple drinks included in our gold star package? Woohoo! Hot toddy, y'all. 
Heck yeah, it's, it's winter time now. It is winter time, but I really love Bloody Marys, and they put pickles and olives and all kinds of stuff in there, so I'm doing this first, and then I'll do a hot yeah, toddy This later. thing is freaking delicious, though. <laughs> so is this. Also, I realized that they actually have smoked salmon chowder on the menu, so I ended up doing that, and Eric got the reindeer pasta. So that way we can eat a little bit of everything. Pasta, it looks a little like, you know, not the best pasta dish I've ever had, but I'm sure it'll be tasty enough for a train ride. <laughs> because it's free. Sure. <laughs> When we take these trains, I love these little middle areas right here. No man's land. <laughs> this is our favorite thing to stand on both cars at the same time. <laughs> Feels like you're surfing. Like a little kid. Yeah. But we've been on some cars where this area is basically completely open and you're stepping over a huge gap. It's terrifying. Yeah, it's really creepy. This one's nice and enclosed. Man, I hate standing on these little trap doors. I feel like it's just gonna fall out from <laughs> under my feet. Yeah, maybe we should just go back to our seats where yeah. it's safe. Back to our private car. Gold star, please. Right this way, sir. This thing is a rocket. Speaking of, we get two free, I was gonna say free drinks, but they're included drinks. Because Inclu <laughs> yeah. we did pay for it, them. It all feels free, but we paid quite a price tag to get all this free food and beverage. <laughs> I think they've got full-on meals that you can purchase. They have a bar, they have a microwave, so if you bring your own food, you can heat it up in here. And I think it's a nice place to come and enjoy a little lunch with big windows and get away from some of the people in your car. This train is definitely one of the nicer ones. I mean, look look how high the ceilings are and everything. It's such a, every car is really nice. It's very cool. And they keep the windows really clean, which we very much appreciate. A lot of the buses and trains we're on, it's really grimy and we can't see anything out These windows are pretty much pristine. But as we mentioned with our gold star pins. Have you mentioned we're gold star? We're gold star members. We don't have to worry about the dining car because we get our meals. We are doing the adventure class on the way back, which sounds fun, but really it's just the cheap tickets and uh, you get no meals included with that. So we will be in here when we go back down to Anchorage. I like how they call that adventure class adventure to make it seem class. like fancy. <laughs> All right, onward, lead the way. Which way do I, do? I, don't, know. I don't know where I, I am. Still more I the train that way. That way. Yeah. So this is the adventure class. Seems pretty adventurous. It's actually really not that bad. I, I think it's still assigned seating and you have some really comfortable looking seats. Obviously you don't have the giant dome windows, but they still put nice big picture windows so you can see all the awesome scenic... <laughs> scenery, what? that's the word I'm looking for. So you can see things? So you can see all the awesome scenery. <laughs> And then there's this area. I'm not exactly sure what it is. It's it seems to have the worst seats though. The worst seats and smells very old. Yeah, and that's probably why it's empty. <laughs> not the best place to be, I guess. So maybe this is the adventure class. This is where we'll be on our ride back. So sadly, unless you pay extra for the gold star access, you can't come up into the first two cars that have the sweet domes, but there is one little piece of one of the back cars that has this little domed area that you can come and sit in. They said to do only 20 to 30 minute stints so everyone gets a chance to come up here, but... The windows might not be quite as big as ours, but you still get a pretty good view. And they're a little dirtier, yeah. but it's still sweet that you have access to this. So I guess the tour wouldn't be complete without showing y'all the bathroom. It's actually surprisingly nice for a train bathroom. Got like, you know, tile backsplash, a nice clean sink. The whole thing is actually really clean. And also surprisingly, it is very spacious. The bathroom's are surprisingly nice, huh? Yeah, except it's really wiggly in there and I was really scared that the water was gonna <laughs> splash up on my bum. It didn't though. Yeah. And it turns out the toilets in the lower class of the train are not quite as fancy. Actually, the quirkiest train ride ever. <laughs> they stopped and exchanged the conductors and it took about five, 10 minutes and now we're off. And we got to wave to all the people on the passing train on the way. I don't know what there is about waving at people. Yeah. Every single person 
without fail that we have passed on the ground has waved at the train. For something about slow moving giant objects, you gotta wave at them. <laughs> Hi and bye. One really cool thing about this train that I did not realize would be happening is we have a narrator back here. She's telling us about everything we're seeing. She's telling us the history of the train. And believe it or not, this is like, I think she said one of the last flag trains. So people can literally wave a flag as it's driving down and the train will stop and they can board the train. Well, not this train exactly. There's oh. another train that goes on the track. <laughs> you can only kind of hear what she's saying. <laughs> so yeah, you get maybe half of it. It's pretty loud, but we just passed the town of Talkeetna and it was waiting there. So apparently a lot of people live in the woods and we're entering an area only accessible by train or I guess maybe an airplane if you have one. So yeah. I guess you can just walk out of your cabin, flag down a train, and hop on it. Cool. I didn't know that existed anywhere in the world. It's very Alaskan, I think. <laughs> well, somehow we ended up being the last people on the train. <laughs> we were I out know getting how. like we a were little intro. <laughs> out getting our foodies and everyone disembarked. Is that what you call it when you. I don't everyone... know. I still don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know train lingo. I need to get better at that. I only know ship stuff, apparently. <laughs> Was that supposed to be. This is like the most low-hanging fruit of jokes. I feel like if you don't just say shit, <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't work. Right when we pull the camera out, the wind picks up. It's like clockwork. No, I don't feel like that at all. <laughs> it was just calm this it entire day. <laughs> it's really calm. But that's right, we've officially made it to Denali National Park, y'all. And it is freaking beautiful the minute you get into the park grounds. And this is a really cool time to come here, I think, because as you can see, the leaves are starting to change on all this vegetation all around oh, us. Oh man, it's total fall vibes down at yeah. the bottom. And then snow-capped peaks up at the top. Yeah, it is super cool. blowing my mind how magical it is out here. As opposed to coming in the dead of winter where it's literally just white and frozen and you die in like 30 minutes. Which is <laughs> what it was last time we were here and you couldn't see anything. So you had no idea that all this beauty was here. So this is the uh, Savage River Trail, which is a nice two mile walk. My ankle is still recovering, you guys. So we really can't hike all that much. I'm kind of bummed about it, but it's a nice little hike around this awesome river down here. I'm also pretty sure that this river is running the wrong way. I think it's kind of running north because I think we've gotten over like the curvature of the earth. It's wild. Yeah. When we were on the train yesterday, everything was running south back towards Anchorage. And at one point we came around a, a bend and we were like, oh, now everything's heading up towards Fairbanks. Yeah. It's, it's pretty kind cool. of trippy. I would love to see the middle where it all just kind of goes off yeah. to the different ways. Whew, it is getting pretty freaking cold out here, you guys. Yeah, I'm so thankful that we are not here in the dead of winter, though. So Denali is the highest mountain in North America. Back in 1953, they estimated the height of this mountain to be 20,320 feet. Then eventually in 2015, they actually used a more precise calculation using GPS data and all that stuff. And it turns out that they were only off by 10 feet. So the new measurement is 20,310 feet. So I guess the mountain technically shrunk by 10 feet. <laughs> But it won't be that way for long because apparently the mountain grows by about one millimeter every year, which is a very, very small amount. But I guess over time it adds up. And the park is vast. It is over six million acres. Wrap your head around that. I'm pretty sure a football field is like an acre and a half or something. So it's like six million-ish of those. <laughs> That's about it. That's all I know about Denali. <laughs> Do you have any more facts? <laughs> no? Nope. <laughs> she usually leaves the fact finding to me. <laughs> Big day in Denali, we came to a brewery, the 49th State Brewery. We've been drinking their beer all over the state, over. and now we're finally at the brewery. We are, and we were just getting the lay of the land while we wait for our table. We came across this. We were very confused. We thought it was an art piece, but it is not, y'all. So in 1840, this tree started growing. That's here in the dead center. And then in 2020, it was cut. And that's all this growth since then, and it just shows the timeline of everything that's happened in that time. 
very cool like in alaska and there's some wild stuff that's been going on i just love that because it feels like the tree is almost like a time capsule or something like every ring just represents like this entire year of history so or more cool. than a year i guess really nature is cool history sometimes not so much cheers cheers to a lovely few days in alaska y'all denali is amazing especially in the fall i think the summer would be cool because it would be warmer but you don't get the colors or the lack of people in the summer. And in the winter, of course, it's a frozen tundra. Yeah. But we have visited Alaska in the dead of winter, and we'll link to that video like on the screen or in the description below or something like that, because it is night and day difference from this trip to Alaska. It was, it was wild. I got blackened salmon. They put a huge piece of salmon on huge there. Huge freaking piece of salmon and bacon. You did a crab grilled cheese. That sounds it sounds cool. awesome. It sounds, he was like, is that for children? And they're like, no, it's for adults. And he's like, I will take that, please. We walked 15,000 steps or close to that. We did. Ish. And we have a uh, shuttle to take us back to our yes. uh, accommodation. So bring on the beers. And the... Let, let's other, just end okay, it. Okay. <laughs> Before you forget what the hell you're trying to say. Okay, goodbye, Richard. We'll see you on the road.